I want to share with you, you know, I was doing a daily devotional today about taking thoughts captive. And, you know, I really want to share some of that information with you because like, you know, we as man, you know, have a hard, pro, you know, hard time, you know, dealing with negative thoughts. We're going to deal with negative situations and people that bring about, you know, negative reactions from us. So, you know, what do we do when we face these negative issues? You know, when we have negative emotions that come up, and believe me, I, I have dealt with that so much. I still deal with, you know, negative issues from people. You know, somebody could say something negative to me or a negative situation can come up. And honestly, you know, I, I spew negative from that situation. Somebody can come up, and I already, you know, I had put a video recently of, you know, what I had dealt with, but, you know, just somebody could say something wrong to me or, you know, could be an injustice or something like that. And instead of taking those thoughts captive, it's like I entertain those thoughts and I speak negative from that. Instead of taking those thoughts captive, in which I should, because, you know, when we entertain a thought, we give license to the enemy to continue to speak negative to us. And I, if you watched my videos, you know of the birthday party back in 2007, in which, you know, friends had for me. And I'm not going to get into the whole thing, but I'll just state that, you know, an email was sent to a friend of ours who had a the same birthday as me and they said hey come to Rob's party and they said to me hey come to such and such party and so I, I took negative from that and the enemy jumped on me and he started speaking even more negative and you know I entertained that first thought because it was appealing the fruit looked appealing and so when I took the fruit from the tree then it gave license to the enemy to speak even more you know, I didn't stop him at the get-go. I didn't stop him at the first negative thought. I entertained it. And since I gave him the okay, he spoke even more. And so it got me irritated to the point that I did not want to go. And I didn't find out about all this until, at, you know, the birthday party. And I felt bad because my friend actually came to celebrate my birthday. And I didn't even think to come celebrate theirs. And so, you know, if you've been hurt in this life, the enemy knows your triggers. He knows what to hit against you. He knows what, you know, gets you upset. So it's, you know, getting to that place to where you're not letting him do that. You're stopping yourself. Because, you know, the less footholds the enemy has on you, the less grip that he has on your life. So it, it takes, you know, getting to that place to when we feel and we hear, you know, if we encounter a negative situation or something, somebody says something to us negative, we, we hear the thought that comes in our mind and it could be, of course, it's got to be the enemy. And so what do we do with that thought? For example, you know, friends of mine, they, they called my friend. I was with a, a close brother years back. And I was hanging out with him, and he received the phone call. And they invited him over there. I guess they didn't know that I was with him. And so he said, well, I'm going to head over there. And I was like, I felt rejection. He said, why don't you come? And I said, no, nah, it's fine. You know, they want you, not me. And he was like, come on, man. So, you know... It's very easy if anybody has dealt with rejection to deal with the, you know, those kind of thoughts. So I could have easily, when that first thought came, to stop it. You know, the first thought is like, they like him more than me. So I could have stopped that. I could have said, you know what? They didn't know I was there. And if I would have transplanted that thought to replace that first one, I would have never had those 
you know, rejection feelings following. So we need to get to that place to where we're actually doing transplanting, you know, to where we're taking something out, taking that negative thought out, and putting a positive in its place. And like that devotional was that I read, that the, the more that we do that, the less grip that the enemy has on us and on our lives. And we're going to start thinking more and more neg- uh, more and more positive about situations and people. And the only reason we think negative of people is because we're looking through a tiny knothole of pain of our lives because we were hurt in this world. So we react out of that hurt. You know, we react out of that own, that small knothole of negativity. And unless we, you know, walk in a different way, then we're going to continue walking in that. So, you know, when you encounter a negative thought, it's up to you at that moment, and you have the choice of saying, okay, I'm, if this negative thought came in, you know, God, help me to think the positive. What is a reasonable, you know, thing that I could put in the place of this? You know, it says in Scripture to always think the good of somebody. So, what can we do to think the good of somebody? You know, there's always a reasonable, you know, excuse for why things happen the way they do. And it's usually not what we really think. So it takes getting to that place where we're changing our thoughts, taking those negative thoughts captive, and bringing them to the submission of Christ. So the question is, are you willing to do that? Or are you going to continue walking in the hurts of your past? And honestly, I think, honestly, that is why the church really has not dealt with the love issue. It's because they're still walking in hurt and pain. You know, they just pick up their Bibles and they possibly, you know, read a few verses and they close their Bibles and go on with their days. Instead of really meditating about what the verse is actually saying and how they can apply them to their lives. So I pray this video has blessed you. Thank you for taking the time to watch.